Welcome to another lecture on summations. Now let us talk about various properties of summations. Summations possess following properties. Linearity, change of variable, convergence and divergence, telescoping series, double summation, distributive law for product of sums, products. In this video we will be covering first two properties linearity and change of variable so let's start with first property the linearity property it states that for any real number c1 and c2 and any finite sequences a1 a2 a3 up to a n and b1 b2 b3 up to bn we have this property is known as linearity property of summations and is also obeyed by infinite summation series. This property is nothing but a combination of some usual rules of arithmetic rewritten in summation notation. So let us understand this property on a whiteboard with some examples. We know that according to distributive law of arithmetic we have this expression. We can write it yet in summation notation as summation variable i ranging from 1 to n constant c times a of i which is equivalent to c time of summation i ranging from 1 to n a of i and according to commutative law of addition we have this expression again we can write this expression in summation form as summation some variable i ranging from 1 to n a of i plus b of i which is equivalent to summation i ranging from 1 to n a of i plus summation i ranging from 1 to n b of i so based on these two properties the linearity property of the summation is, is derived. So let us understand this property with some examples. Now let us understand this linearity property with some examples. First example is evaluate this summation series. Now we can write this summation series equivalent to summation i ranging from 1 to 9 5 of i the first term plus summation i ranging from 1 to 9 8 the second term which is equivalent to since 5 is a constant 
and does not depend on this variable i we can move it out so it is equivalent to five times summation i ranging from one to nine i plus again here we have a constant and the summation of constant from i ranging from one to nine is equivalent to n times the constant c this is a formula so we can write it as 9 multiplied by 8 so further we know that summation i ranging from 1 to n of i is equivalent to i into i plus 1 divided by 2 this 2 is a formula so we can write it as 5 multiplied by 9 into 9 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 9 8 is 72 so this is equivalent to 5 into 9 multiplied by 10 divided by 2 plus 72 so here we can divide it by 5 5 times so 5 multiplied by 9 multiplied by 5 it is equivalent to 225 plus 72 which is equivalent to 297 so do you saw how we can use this linearity property to solve these summation expressions now it is your turn to solve this question evaluate the sum of this expression so it is similar to the above question but here we have modified it a bit so you need to use the linearity property to solve this summation series take some time use rough work and evaluate this expression if your result is 1316 then hurrah you have well understood this linearity property if not don't worry repeat this video lecture watch it again and then try this question once again now let us take property number two that is change of variable according to this property the index of summation can be changed without affecting the summation formula for example we can write here we have changed the index variable i to k as long as we reflect this change in the summation element a it does not affect our summation result we can also have following transformation here f of i is a function of i that represents a permutation of its range more precisely for each integer i satisfying the relation r of i there must exactly one there must exactly be one integer j satisfying the relation p of j is equal to i this condition is always satisfied in important cases p of j is equal to c plus j and p of j is equal to c minus j here c is an integer not depending upon j and these are the cases used most frequently in applications for example we can write these three summations look different but are not let me explain in the first case summation index i range from 1 to n so series evaluates to a1 a2 a3 up to a m now in the second summation summation index i again range from 1 to n but we are subtracting one from it each time so actually it ranges from 0 to n minus 1 but 
we are adding this one back to the summation term a which again results in the summation series a1 a2 a3 up to an which is equivalent to the first summation finally in the third summation summation index i is ranging from 2 to n plus 1 which is same as adding 1 to it to neutralize this effect we are subtracting 1 from the summation term a so again the series is a1 a2 a3 up to a n so all the three summations result in same terms hence are equivalent this looks a bit complicated but it isn't so let's understand this property on a whiteboard using some examples now let's understand this change of variable property with the help of some examples the first example is evaluate the sum of this series the series ranges from 7 to 12 and consists of two parts k and 1 using the linearity property we can rewrite this summation series as here now we need to evaluate two summation series one ranging from 7 to 12 of this k which is dependent on the index variable and another consisting of a constant ranging from 7 to 12 now let us take the second part first since here we have to add constant 1 from 7 to 12 so its formula is 12 minus the starting variable 1 plus 1 times the constant c which is 1 so it is equivalent to 12 minus 7 is equal to 5 plus 1 times 1 which is equivalent to 6 so the first part is equivalent to 6 so we can write this summation formula as summation k ranging from 7 to 12 of k plus 6 now we need to evaluate this first summation series since we have to add this k from 7 to 12 but if the index was from 1 to 12 we would have easily used the formula k into k plus 1 divided by 2 but since the index is ranging from 7 to 12 we can rewrite this variable as summation k ranging from 1 to 12 k now here we have added the terms from 1 to 6 which were not in the original summation series so we need to subtract these two these terms so we will subtract the terms from k ranging from 1 to 6 plus 6 so here we have changed the index the original index was from 7 to 12 but we have changed it to 1 to 12 and to neutralize its effect we have subtracted the terms from 1 to 6 which were added in the first part now it is easy to evaluate these two terms using the formula so the first term is k ranging from 1 to 12 of k which is equivalent to 12 into 12 plus 1 divided by 2 that is n into n plus 1 divided by 2 minus the second term is k ranging from 1 to 6 that is i forgot to write the k so that is 6 into 6 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 6 now this is equivalent to we can easily calculate it 6 multiplied by 13 
minus 3 multiplied by 7 plus 6 6 is multiplied by 13 is 78 minus 21 plus 6 which is equivalent to 57 plus 6 which finally is equivalent to 63 so here you might have observed how we have changed the index of this summation so as to fit it to some predefined formulas and we can easily calculate the result of this summation series now it is your turn to evaluate some summation series using this property evaluate the sum of this series notes here the index is ranging from 3 to 100 try to solve it and if your result is 2,5,4,3,1 then great if not watch the video lecture again so as to understand this property well let's understand this property with some more examples evaluate the sum of this series so here is the solution for this series sometimes you will be provided some series for which though no general form uh, form will be given you have to deduce the general form for this series so by closely looking at this series we get that from the second term onwards each number is a multiple of 5 so if we take away this 5 from second term onwards we get the series 1 plus 5 multiplied by 3 the first term is 5 multiplied by 3 plus second is 5 multiplied by 4 5 and so on 245 is 5 multiplied by 49 now again we can rewrite this series as 1 plus 5 into now this whole series can be written in summation form summation i ranging from 3 to 49 i now it is easy to calculate this the sum of this series so which is further equivalent to 1 plus 5 multiplied by since the series index starts from 3 we can shift it to 1 so we can write it as summation i ranging from 1 to 49 of i but we have added few terms that we need uh, require to remove from it so minus summation i ranging from 1 to 2 of i now calculating further it is equivalent to 1 plus 5 into summation i ranging from 1 to 49 of i is a formula and we can write it as 49 into 49 plus 1 divided by 2 minus this formula is equivalent to 2 into 2 plus 1 divided by 2 moving further 1 plus 5 this is equivalent to 49 into 50 divided by 2 minus 3 so 2 multiplied by 25 is 50 so we get 1 plus 5 multiplied by 49 into 25 minus 3 which is further equivalent to 1 plus 5 multiplied by 
49 into 25 is equal to 1225 minus 3. So it is equal to 1 plus 5 multiplied by 1225 minus 3 that is equal to 1222. Two, two. So 1 plus 5 multiplied by 1222 two, two plus 1 is equal to 6110. So finally, the result is 6111. So here we were given a series. So first step was to deduce its general form. So by looking at the series, we found that from second term onwards it is a multiple of 5. So we have moved out this 5 from all the terms. The remaining terms remain 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus up to 49. Then we have brought it to the summation form. Now after that we have used the change of index property to change the index from 3 to 1. Since we have added some terms we have accordingly adjusted them by subtracting these terms from the summation. Finally we calculated these reserve values and got the result 6 triple 1. Here is an example for you to try at home. Evaluate the series 24 plus 27 plus 30 plus 33 plus dash 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 up to 90. 